You know, grave workers are few and far between. When it comes to necromancy, there's a lot of people who try to employ death energy from graveyards in order to empower themselves and to gain further knowledge or to become something that is fueled by the energy that is put off by those who are dead or dying. Um, grave workers, as far as I understand them, being myself a grave worker, uh, we actually try to allow the dead to pass on. We try to help the dead to resolve, you know, what is whatever is left by, you know, a person who has lived. We try to allow that and help that move on and dissipate and become a grander part of all that is rather than focus into a singular point of attachment to who one was. Um, of course, when we talk about soul fragmentation, the soul itself, anti-material particle, it cannot be held back. It'll go, if, it'll go from our life to another life to another life and to our, another life through various incarnations in order to try to get to the source. The only reason that we age is because of the antimaterial particle. Um, the spirit, life force, goes back into the earth. But the ghost, very much associated with the ego, clings on to the ideas and the focuses and the, the essence of what somebody lived in, with, and also the ego itself has an essence that is made up of choices. Um, when, a, when somebody makes choices throughout their life, all these choices kind of gather around the ego. They, they create its essence for a single individual. It becomes a cocoon for the original idea of love and compassion. So when we think about ghosts, it's an ego that cannot let go. When the spirit is let go, when the soul has let go, ego cannot let go. And then that's what it is to be to become a ghost. You're attached to your to the duty that you had as an individual, as a singular individual. You're attached to a singular identity. You're attached to a singular um, interpretation of the cosmos. And you're brought to a single point. And then over time, that ghost will diminish. It will kind of run out. But that ghost in and of itself is something that we need not produce. We need not produce a part of ourselves that can't let go of this material, this bodily identification. And when it comes to the spirit and soul, those things are very much unconscious in a way because the spirit life force and the soul is the anti-material particle but also it remembers all its other lives so it's not really quote unquote us but when we're dealing with our ghosts in a way the ego identified with the life that it lived it's not it's not easy to get a cut and paste explanation of what one should do in that instance but living throughout your life Try not to be so attached to who you are or what you do or what you're craving in life. Um, there's a lot of people who really experience a spiritual path and then they don't become attached to what they were attached to before. But the best thing that you can do for yourself is just try not to be as attached to the things that you think you identify with. And if you do that, then you're more likely to be able to, that part of yourself is more likely to be able to uh, either, you know, coalesce with existence, merge into existence, or just completely move on. Um, and that's a way to prepare for what's going to happen to a part of yourself. So it's, uh, it's a long road. Um, being someone a human being with choices it's not all one part there's many parts to us and there's many ways that we move forward and when we die move on it's not cut and dry it's not as easy as people say it is but i will say that as a human being 
the best we can do is try to understand why we're here, what our purpose is based on the life that we've been given, and also try to figure out exactly the essence that is in all things that is one. Thank you very much for watching. I hope all of you have a wonderful day. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, shoot them down in the comment section below on YouTube. At any rate, all of you have a wonderful day. Find yourselves and become one.